What's going on YouTubers? Gadang775 back with another video. Today, I want to go ahead and talk about my top 5, my personal game awards, my top 5 games of 2019. Now, it was a tough call because there's a bunch of good games this year that came out. Borderlands 3, Gears 5, Outer Worlds, Call of Duty, Jedi Fallen Order, whatnot. A bunch of great games. Now, this year wasn't as good as 2018, but it was close. All right, I had a lot of fun gaming this year, and let's go ahead and start off with number five. As you can see in the background, this game is Greedfall. Okay, I think I gave this score, uh, th this game, a score of eight out of ten. Now, all of these games I talk about here, I have beat from start to finish, so I can give you folks my full perspective. And each of their um, reviews, except Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I did not do a video review on Call of Duty Modern Warfare. But I'll think about it. I might do one, okay? Because it's really good. And it you, it's surprisingly high on my list, okay? If you keep on watching this video. But yeah, Greedfall is number 5. I gave it an 8.0 out of 10. With 1 being garbage and 10 being the absolute... Uh, 10 being the best thing ever since the day I was born. Scoring an 8 is a pretty good score in my book, alright? And this game has it all. This is like the... If you folks been craving like a Dragon's Age type RPG... Okay, this is your game right here. Okay, folks over at Spider Studios created an awesome new IP here. I can't wait till a sequel or some type of, you know, game in the same Greedfall universe comes out because I am definitely picking it up day one. And I hope they they add it. Well, actually, they there was a lot of stuff they put into this game. The combat and gameplay is like very similar to The Witcher. You got a companion system very similar to Dragon's Age, and you could and the the companion system. I mean, yeah, it's you could interact, and each companion had their own storyline, which you could do, and that's what I did. I'm 99% sure I got the best ending in Greedfall, but you folks should check it out. It's number five in my top five 2019 games. Okay, go ahead and check it out. Greedfall is fantastic if you haven't played it yet. Now, let's go ahead and go to my number four pick. Now, this is gonna be tough, okay, but I had to. Put Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order at number four right now. I mean, it's number four. I'm shocked. I thought it would be higher on the list, but I gave this score an 8.5 out of 10 um, when I when I played the game from start to finish. Now you're a young Jedi um, novice, okay, Padawan, Cal Kestis, okay. He escaped ex um, um, Executive Order 66, and he's been on the run ever since. But the funny thing about the Force, it has a way of pulling people back into their destiny and what they were meant to do. Now he goes off in search with a with a host of other um, companions. Now this game has companions as well. The thing is, they're not interactable. You, well, they, you can interact with them, but they don't follow you along like the games like Greedfall and whatnot and Outer World and stuff. But um, you can talk with them. They come aboard your ship. And I think there's a total of five, I think, five companions that you get from in this game. And I like the interaction, the banter between the companions. It's really great. Now, the the last boss, the last boss fight, man, that 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 was awesome. Okay, you get to see a cameo by a classic Star Wars um, villain, and it was fantastic. And I like the story of how this goes. I'm hoping this kid is in more Star Wars games in the future say like they make a sequel say maybe this kid you know by the time Luke Skywalker's older maybe this kid's like uh he's gonna be he's gonna be an old man already he's gonna be close to how old um Obi-Wan Kenobi is already when he first meets um Luke Skywalker if he does meet him sometime in the future you know or maybe he meets uh Kyle Katarn or something like that I'm looking forward to a sequel with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order uh, fantastic job by Respawn now I know the game has a bunch of hitches and whatnot None of those, um, I had none of those problems playing this game, Jedi Fallen Order. Hence why it's number 4, and I scored it an 8.5 out of 10. It's my number 4 game of 2019. Now, this is a tough one, okay? In my top 3 games here, okay, I have to give Gears 5 my top 3 pick of the year, 2019. Alright, I scored this game an 8.9 out of 10. Alright, I played through that campaign... Now, I really like the story of Gears 5, okay? It's a continuation of Gears 4. And, and that's what I play mostly Gears 4 is the campaign. So I don't do too much multiplayer in the Gears campaign. It's just not me that running around and run, run around with a shotgun. It's not me, okay? If I'm playing multiplayer, I'm more of a Battle Royale or a Call of Duty, you know, um, 
you know, Twitch shooter type of RP um, multiplayer. So, but Gears 5, I did enjoy the campaign, even though there was a bunch of technical glitches at launch where I could not progress the game. Um, and it, it's, it made me repeat a few missions quite a few times because it, hit, it would hit this infinite loading loop. Despite that, now despite those hindrances and those um, roadblocks, I really did enjoy Gears 5. I love the boss battles, the final boss battle. Was pretty cool I like that that thing that you fought it was awesome Gears 5 was, was fantastic I gave it an 8.9 out of 10 okay and that point one I deducted because that hindrances you know I ran into those um those technical issues now um, it wouldn't I wouldn't have docked a point but I had to repeat a bunch of missions over again so I probably I think I lost four around four hours of time okay playing this game like, I would have been done with it four hours sooner had I not run into those issues and had to repeat missions. And some of those missions, I was playing it on hard. Not the hardest mode, but hard. So, some of those missions were difficult. And I played it, you know, solo. I played it by myself. I didn't play in co-op. Because usually when I co-op, when I play a campaign, I want to play it through myself. Because when you play it co-op, you hear your friends talking, you kind of you kind of lose sight on what the story is. Hence why I played it by myself. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story. Now... Um, I feel for those who could not complete it. They got frustrated, you know, but you know, I'm not the one I'm the type of person to give up because of a few technical issues like that. If something interests me, I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. And I finished Gears 5 and it's my top three game of 2019. Fantastic job, Coalition. You folks Is it Coalition? Yeah, it's Coalition. I forgot. I, I get those guys confused all the time. Coalition, Playground, um, 343. I get them all confused. But yeah, fantastic job. I just hope they take the story. Some um, I'm I'm kind of curious how they they you know take the Gears Five story and make it a Gear Six. I hope they take a break though from Gears because Gears does kind of feel dated. I hope they kind of change things up a little bit. But um, that skiff was kind of felt like an add-on and whatnot. But still, Gears Five is my top three game of 2019. Folks, go ahead and check it out. It's in Xbox Game Pass now. My number two game of the year. It's either between Outer Worlds and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Alright, now it's going to be obvious. I did not do a video review of Call of Duty Modern Warfare. But I'm going to have to pick my 2019 number two game of the year is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now, I am pretty close. I put about 150, yeah, I, I put about 150 hours into Call of Duty Modern Warfare already. Um, by the time this video launches, yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'll be up right at 150 hours. And that's unheard of for me to put that much time in, in a mainly multiplayer game. Um, that's unheard of for mainly a multiplayer game for me to put that much time on. Because, I don't know, the last Call of Duty I couldn't get into. Um, and the few Call of Duties before that. But this one is kind of like a back to reality sort of modern warfare. Where there's no super high double jumps, no raw wall jumping, no superpowers. It's just a straight up run and gun shoot mechanic where you, you know, boots on the ground, awesome gameplay experience. And I love it. Okay, I love the Spec Ops parts. It's a bit hard, but I'm, I'm having fun with the Spec Ops. Uh, and especially the campaign. That campaign was definitely awesome. Even though it was short, it was definitely awesome. And the last stage when you're just playing that heroic music, you're going up that hill. You folks know what I mean if you beat the game already. It's a fantastic game. If I were to rate this game, Call of Duty, with 1 being um, garbage and 10 being the best thing ever since the day I was born, I would give this game a solid 9.0 out of 10. A 9 out of 10. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Congratulations. This game is fantastic. And... It was so good, I invested in the Battle Pass. I bought the $10 Battle Pass. Well, I actually got it for free because I had a bunch of COD points. I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how I earned the COD points. I know I beat the game. Okay. And I played. I maxed out my, uh, what do you call that? I, I topped up at 155. Then they released the Battle Pass. And I'm close to um, uh, 100, I guess. 100. And I'm like tier 30 or something on my Battle Pass. So I have no I, I know you get COD points by just playing the multiplayer. I know that. So I'm assuming you get COD points by playing Spec Ops, maybe beating the game. I don't know how I got them, but that's how I used it, those COD points to buy 
uh, my battle pass and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have enough COD points when the next battle pass comes around and I'm gonna use to buy that too alright but yeah I'm loving I'm loving Call of Duty fantastic fantastic game my number two game of 2019 now I had to save the best for last alright and this game is the outer worlds now this game okay it's like a breath of fresh air it's something new new it's a new IP something I wasn't expecting but it did come out I did not expect it to be this good all right it's more like a more fallout like a fallout New Vegas light that's what I say and fallout New Vegas for me that was my favorite fallout game ever okay fallout New Vegas had some witty banter you know, you, you look at the, you look at the, what do you call that? The words, the text writing, and your replies. It was fantastic. I'm hoping the next Outer Worlds you get a fully voiced, um, fully voiced character, male or female, kind of how, like how they did the Fallout 4. Because if anyone can pull it off, Obsidian can. All right, get some witty banter in there. Um, the combat, it's Unreal Engine 4, not that that weird, you know, that engine from uh, Fall from Bethesda. You know, no, don't get me wrong. I like the Fallout 4 combat, Fallout 76. The thing is, it feels a little dated. This Outer Worlds with the Unreal Engine, it feels a lot smoother. Combat smoother. Um, I love the the superpowers your companion has, and I love how they they changed up the they they kind of have a replacement for VOTs. If you don't know what VOTs is, play some play Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 4. VOTs is where time slows down, and you can kind of target each part of the body. Well, the Outer Worlds has something similar. Um, it's a time time slowdown, a la Max Payne. You know how everything slows down, but the character, your companion superpowers, and each companion has their own storyline and side quests. You can go ahead and finish. I love when they do that in games. You know, like adds extra story content on there, and. You know how the side quests and the companion characters usually don't mesh up with the game and have no reason to be there in the game, okay? A lot of like like the Mass Effects and whatnot. Um, don't get me wrong, some of those they did kind of coincide with the game, but the Outer Worlds, a lot of the, if you're a lot of companion side quests and a lot of side quests you run into is going to help you benefit you at the end of the game, alright? It's a fantastic experience. I suggest everyone go ahead and play the Outer Worlds if you're a Fallout fan. Um, and it's on Xbox Game Pass. So, and I scored the Outer Worlds a solid 9 out of 10. Now, I'm looking forward to a DLC announcement anytime soon, either going to be at this Game Awards or sometime early next year because there are planets in the Outer Worlds after you're done with the game that you cannot access. So, I'm pretty sure that's DLC coming. 95% sure that DLC is coming to where I'm hoping it's free, but if it's not, this game was so good, I'm willing to pay for it. I'm willing to pay for the DLC. But yeah, let me know what you folks think about my top 5 games of 2019 with Outer Worlds taking the top spot. Let me know what you folks think in the comments down below. This is Gadang775, just the my boy in Texas, aka Sully. Thanks for watching. Peace out. <laughs>